Welcome! Let's start learning about lists and how we can use these ice cream cones to demonstrate amazing list functions like coming to the finish line. And you'll see that my name is on top because I have three points. Merck's name's on bottom, but if he collects all three ice cream cones over there, now Merck's on top! He's got more points than me! In today's video, we're going to start with some list basics, and then we're going to learn some awesome list concepts and how you can really take it a step further. First thing I'd like you to do is pull out a script block. This script block is going to be the first list you're going to create. This is going to be called the player list. So we don't need win world to start it. We'll pull down to delete that. Then we're going to go to our variables tab, click new variable, call this plid list, and then change it from number to player, then turn on the list slider. And now that we have this created, we'll click confirm. And you can see that this is a list because it has brackets around the player ID icon. Now with this list formed, the next thing we need to do is create two events. To keep an updated player ID list, if we go to our events tab, we can track when the world is entered by a player. We'll grab when player enters world, drag that to the left, and when player exit worlds, also drag that to the left. And then if we go to our operators tab and scroll all the way to the bottom, this is where all of the list functions are. So the first thing we need to do is use add to list. You're going to put that under when world is entered by player. What are we adding? We're adding the player's ID value to the list. And so if we go to our variables tab, we can grab player ID list, drag that to the right side. Now when the world is entered by a player, we've added that player to the list and the first person into the world is first on the list, the second is the second on the list, and so on and so forth. Now when the world is exited by a player, we need to remove them from the list. To do that, we go back to the operators tab, scroll to the bottom again, and you're going to see remove item at index from list. Drag that under when world is exited by player, and you're going to note this is a number that we're removing from the list. We can grab the player ID list from the top one and pull down and joystick to the right to duplicate. So now we have player ID list brought down. You can also get this from the variables tab by dragging it over. And now we need to figure out where is the player in the player ID list. To do that, we go back to the operators tab and you're going to see index of item in list. This allows us to get the number that the player is at inside of the list. So we drag player down here to index of player in the list. And then we'll go to our variables tab to show you the alternate method of bringing this over. And we can drop that over here. You can also use the duplicate tool just like we did before. Now that we have this set up, we have a list that accurately tracks all the players who are online in the world. There are many ways in which we can use this list. But before we get into that, I'd like to show you one really cool way to use lists that track player ID values. I'm going to talk about these ice cream cones and how when you put your hand in this trigger, it only goes off one time. It will not go off a second time. If we go and look at our scores plus one list, you're going to see that when the trigger is entered by the player, we're checking to see if they are in the list. And then we add the player to the list if they are not in the list. And we set their score to be plus points. And then we play visual effect. Let's go break down exactly how this works. If we come to our variables tab, we've got our player ID list. We've also got the visual effect. That's the confetti going off. And we've got a number variable, which is called points. And this is how many points you earn when you select that object. So that ice cream cone. And you'll note this scores plus one script is running on the trigger inside of the ice cream cone. The first thing we're going to do is head over to our events tab, scroll down, and you're going to see when trigger is entered by player. And so just for reference, we're recreating this up here just so I can explain step step by step what we've done. So when trigger is entered by player, the first thing we need is scroll back to the top of the events tab, grab an if statement, and we're checking to see if the player is inside of the list. Now when a player is inside of a list, they get a value between zero and more. So if there's two people in the list, they could be zero or one. If there's three people, zero, one, or two. And if they are not in the list, then it returns a value of negative one. This means to check if the player's in the list, we're going to head to our operators tab, grab the less than symbol, and we're going to find out if the the index of the player inside of the list is less than, if we go to our values tab, we can grab number input zero. And so if it comes back negative one, this will be true. And so we can go to the operators tab, scroll to the very bottom for all of our list functions, and you're going to see get index of item in list. It's the very last one. And all we need to do is drag down our player because that's the item we're checking. And if we go back to our variables tab, we can grab the player ID list. Now we've gone and checked to see if the player is in the player ID list. Having checked that, the first thing we need to do is 
add the player to the player ID list. So we go back to our operators tab and you're going to see add to list right at the top of the list section. And we're going to grab that player, drop it into the value tab, grab player ID list. And so what I like to do is just point and joystick to the right to duplicate. And then I can let go to have it return back to its original position. So now I've added the player to the player ID list, which means this if statement can only go off once. That is exactly how we've made it. So the ice cream can give you one point, but not a second point if you try to collect it again, but everybody can still get points from it. So then the next thing we need to do is set a player persistent variable. Open up our menu and from our menu, go to your settings icon and in the top right, you're going to see player. Under player, we have persistent player variables and you can create a new one by pressing this button here. Give it a name. So I've called mine current score and then press create. Now that we have our current score number variable, you'll note there is a delete icon. So if you have a need to delete everybody's score that's ever existed, that's the button you'd click, but I do not recommend doing that. And then once we're back in our script panel, if you go to your values tab at the very top, you'll see set player persistent variable and get player persistent variable. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the set player persistent variable and drag that underneath the add. We're going to change it from change me to current score. And we don't want it to be the number zero. We don't want to set their current score to zero. So we're going to go grab that and pull down to delete. And the value we're going to set it to be, if we go to our operators tab, is at the very top, there's a plus symbol. And we want to add one to their current score. So we're going to go back to the values tab, get the player's persistent variable current score. So we want to get the current value. And we're going to go grab the player ID value from here, drop that in here. And since we're at that, we're going to also drop it right here at the very end. So we filled out this is for this player here and we're setting it for the current player as well. And then what are we adding? Well, you'll remember we created a variable called points and we just drag points in here to the B slot. And so if your ice cream had two scoops, you get two points. If it has one scoop, you get one point. This value can be filled out in the triggers property panel. With that out of the way, the last thing to do is play a visual effect. And so we go to our actions tab, go ahead and scroll down to play visual effect. We're going to drop that at the bottom, make sure it's also embedded into the if statement. So you can see that it's indented one over and then we're not playing visual effects self. We need to go back to our variables tab and you'll see the visual effects object variable we created earlier. And now that we have that, this will play the visual effects. And so if we come out over here, we go to our build section. We're going to grab a trigger gizmo. We're also going to grab a ball shape, which will represent our ice cream. And if we go to our gizmos tab, we can grab a particle effects, which we're going to make confetti burst. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have that set up, the last thing to do is open up the properties panel for our trigger. With the triggers property panel open, we can attach the script by using this drop down. So we'll go ahead and attach score plus one. You'll see here there's a space to fill out for the visual effects. So if we come up to our visual effect, we can grab the reference pill point and let go here on the empty. So now that's filled out. And here's where I said you can adjust the point. So it's currently set to a default of one, which is perfect because this is just one scoop. But if we duplicated this and now we have, say, a quadruple scoop of ice cream, that could be worth a lot of points. So we go drop four points in there for that. And now when the player's hand goes through this trigger, they're going to receive four points and the confetti will burst. So to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and group these together. And with that group together, we're going to come down into our area here, let that go there. And now I'll come in as a player. We'll go tap the top. Boof. And if I come over here, we can see I got four points. That's awesome. And you'll also note I cannot trigger it again. We're back here looking at our player list we created earlier. And now what I'd like you to do is go to the player list and we're going to add score. This is now player score list. We're going to use this on a text object. And so on this text object, we're now going to go back to our events, scroll to the top. And when world is started, we're going to create a loop. And to create a loop, we're going to grab when event is received and what event we're going to use the loop event. So click new event and we're going to give this the name L O O P. And so now that we have an event called loop, we now need to receive this event. So when world is started, if you scroll down to event actions, we can send event with delay, which we'll put underneath the loop. And you'll also see send event to object, which we'll put under when world is started. And what are we sending? Well, we're sending the loop event. You'll see it's in the drop down menu now, and we'll also do that down here. So now that we have when world is started, send loop to self, 
then when loop is received, we send loop to self after one second. So every second, we're going to update the scoreboard. Now, the next thing that we need to do is recognize that this is running on a text object. So if we go to our actions tab and scroll down, you're going to see display text. We're going to drop display text right before we send the loop back to self. But we're not going to display string s on self. We're going to delete that. And this is displaying on self, so that's perfect. But we're going to display a variable. So go to your variables tab and create a new variable. And this is going to be called string. So that's the one at the very bottom. And this string is going to be called scores. Confirm. Perfect. So now that we have scores, we're going to drag scores over to string. And now we have display scores on self. To fill out this scores list, we're going to need some more variables. Before we go any further, let's talk about in general how this works. Well, right now we have a list of player ID values. And what we're going to do is run through each player that's in the list, grab their name, and their current score, and then add it to this text object. And then at the very end, display the text. Now to do this, we're going to go and create a new variable, which will be a number variable called iterator. Now iterator is simply a number that we can use in motion. And you'll see how that works momentarily. And then we go to our events tab. And if you scroll to the very top, there's a while statement, it's right underneath if statement. And so while is a loop. And so inside of our loop, we're going to run another loop. <laughs> and so what are we running? Well, before we define the condition for while it's running, let's actually start by going to our values tab, grabbing set to. And we're going to do two set twos, so joystick to the right to duplicate it twice. And what variables are we setting? Well, we're going to set variables iterator and variables score to be blank. We want to clear these out. So we set scores and we go to our values tab, scroll to the very bottom and grab a string input. And the string input, I'm actually not going to leave this blank. I think I'm going to fill this out with just like score board and then shift colon. So now I've got this really nice scoreboard text in here. So by default, it starts at scoreboard and the iterator. Well, the iterator needs to start as the length of the list. And to do that, we go to our operators tab, scroll down to your list functions again, and we're going to get the length of list. It's the top one at the list. We just need to fill out which list is it. And what length of list is going to do is it's simply going to count how many people are in this player ID list. So if there's four players online, then iterator will be set to four. So now that we've set our iterator to be the length of the player list, we can now iterate through the player list. So while what's the condition? Well, we're going to go to our operators tab, scroll to the very top where you're going to find logic. And under logic, we want to make sure this is running as long as iterator is greater than or equal to we're going to go ahead and select iterator and I'm going to joystick to the right. Remember, you can also grab this from your variables tab, I'm going to go ahead and grab the number input from our values tab. And so this will continue to run as long as iterator is greater than or equal to one. Next thing we need to do inside of our loop, because this while loop is going to run independently and display will not go off until the while loop is finished running. So the first thing we do is go back to our set commands. We're going to grab set to, and we just need to update our iterator. So every time this runs, we iterate through and we subtract one. So go to our operators tab, grab minus, and we're going to select iterator again, joystick to the right to duplicate, grab the number one, joystick to the right to duplicate. And now we're setting iterator to be iterator minus one. So if we started with a length of four players in the list, it's important to note that location inside of a list starts at zero. So if you're player number one, you're actually zero. If you're player number four, you're actually three. So if we've got an iterator at value four, then we subtract one, we are now at the bottom of the list, which is number three. So now that we have the bottom of the list set iterator to be iterator minus one, we then need to set our scores to be for the current player. So to do that, we're going to go back to our values tab, grab the set to, and we're going to drop set to under iterator, and we're going to need a couple of these. And then we grab our scores from our variable tab. So we'll go ahead and drop that here and there. And then go back to our operators tab, grab a couple plus symbols here and there. And I think we're gonna need a couple more. So just a little extra in there. And then the next thing we do is go back to our variables tab, grab scores, joystick to the right to drop it into the A slot on the left. This allows us to continue adding to this string variable, making it longer and longer. But we want to break it into separate lines. So we need to add a break symbol immediately after adding to it. So if we go to our 
values tab, scroll to the bottom and grab string input, we're going to fill this out with a break. And a break is simply a less than symbol, b, r, and greater than symbol. So this will break it onto another line. So we start with scoreboard, then we go to the next line. And the first thing we want to do is get the player's name. Player's name is found under the operators tab. If you scroll down, you're going to find player, and then you'll see name of player. We're going to drag name of player here. Now, how do we get the name of the player that is the iterator? Well, we go back to the very bottom and you're going to see get item from list. And so this is going to allow us to get the player from the list that's at a specific number. So then we go and grab iterator and we'll joystick to the right to duplicate that into the number slot. And from the list, well, that's the player ID list. So once again, we'll grab and joystick to the right. And again, if you're having trouble, you can always find this under the variables tab as well. And now that we've added the name of the player to the scoreboard, so we start with like lakes 05, we then want to add a little more text and then display score. So if we go to our values tab, we're going to grab a string input and put that on the left side. And then on the right side, we know it's going to be a score value, which is a number. So we need to use variable as string to convert the number into a text value because number and string are different elements. That's why you see like number input versus string input. So we do need to convert number into string even though they kind of have some overlap. What do we want to put between them? Well, I'd like it to say player ID's score. So I'm going to do apostrophe S score and then colon. So I've added apostrophe S score colon and then I'll add a space bar and then we'll display their score. So I'll press enter there. Then we're going to go to our values tab, scroll up to get player persistent variable. And then once again, we just need to, we can scroll over by clicking and dragging on here. We can scroll like that. The player's persistent variable getting is current score. This will be for this exact same get item. So we can click get item and joystick to the right to duplicate it here. And just remember, you can see it visually highlighted when my mouse is over it. So here, this is highlighted versus this being highlighted versus name being highlighted. So make sure you get the get item from player ID list when you're duplicating this. And now that we've added that, We've completed the full string for that player ID value, and then this can cycle again. If we think about this being the four player instance, you'll remember when it comes through, it's at four, then we subtract one, bringing it to three, then we go through and add the player's name plus their score, and then we come back and run again, where it'll set it to be two. So we subtract one from three, and then we're at two, and then we do it for the player in the two slot, then the one slot, then the zero slot, because remember when it comes through as a one value, we subtract one, bringing it to zero. And then we stop running because after that, when iterator equals zero, we are below the point at which there are player ID values left. So we then display the scores on self and then we send loop back to self. And then this is happening every second. So there's a lot of code happening in this one second. So you might consider breaking this up over a larger period of time or have a specific event that sends off this display event. For instance, in our ice cream scenario, we have this trigger, which is the only time that the scoreboard gets updated. Now to make sure that this works, we're going to go ahead and pull out a text gizmo, open up the properties of the text gizmo, go to attach script, and we're going to attach the player score list. And now that we have scoreboard here, I'm going to move this down and into here. So now if I come in as a player, my name has been added and it says Lake so five score zero. Okay, well, let's get some points. So I just grabbed three points. Look, my score is on here and Merck's in here. But the big difference between this and what we're going to go over in the next is how to make it ordered. Because here you can see Merck's on top, even though my score is higher. Getting it to look like this is a little bit more difficult. Now that you understand list basics, we're going to break down the script that allows you to order in terms of who has the highest amount of points. Now, this is going to be a higher level view. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. But I'd recommend checking out some of our Let's Start Scripting series videos. I'll post a link in the description as well for that. And in addition, this world is available as a demo. So just ask if you'd like access to it. Starting with our variables, we have T2, which is an object variable for our trigger, which represents the finish trigger. We have all player IDs, which is a list variable of player IDs. And we also have scoreboard player IDs, which is also a list variable of player IDs. We then have iterator, which is a number variable. We have current player ID, which is just a player ID variable, not a list, as well as empty player ID variable, also not a list. And then we have current high score, which is a number variable, and scoreboard string, which is a string variable. 
When the world is started, we're going to connect the finish trigger, trigger enter event to local event finish. And then we hide self, and this is running on the text object, so we're hiding the text until someone is finished. Then when the world is entered by a player, we're adding that player to the player ID list. Then we set current score to zero for that player, because when they enter, we don't want them to have any points. When the world is exited by the player, we remove the player at index. So we grab the index for the player, and then from the list, and then we remove them from the list. When finish is received, and we have to create a new parameter, which is a player ID variable that I've labeled PLID. So this tells us which player has entered the trigger. Now we don't actually use this variable, but it is necessary to receive this event. The next thing we do is clear the scoreboard player ID list. So we clear out the scoreboard player ID list. We then send event display to self. The display event functions like a loop, but we'll get into that in just a moment. The first thing we do is say, if the length of the scoreboard player ID list does not equal the length of all player IDs, meaning not everybody is in the scoreboard player ID list, we set current player ID to be empty. So we clear out the current player ID variable. We then set current high scores to zero, also clearing out that high score variable. We then set iterator to be the length of the player ID list, the all player ID list, so we know how many players are online. And then while iterator is greater than or equal to one, meaning there are players still left in the list to iterate through, we set iterator to be iterator minus one. So the way the iterator works is it's going to say, okay, there's four players online. We then say, okay, if there's four, then the number four is greater than one, and therefore we take iterator and we subtract one. Now, subtracting one allows us to move through the list, but it's also important because if the length of the list is four, meaning there's four players online, player number four is actually number three because the list starts at zero. So it goes zero, one, two, and then three is actually number four, which is why we start by removing one rather than doing this at the very end. After setting iterator to be minus one, we then run an if statement to check if the player, the current player from the all player ID list, is inside of the scoreboard player IDs. Now to do that, we recognize that if the player was in the scoreboard player ID list, they'd have a number that would range from zero plus, meaning it's higher than zero. And so if they are not in the player ID, list, it comes back as negative one. So when we get the index of the player from our current iterator from the all player ID list in the scoreboard player IDs, it's going to return negative one if they aren't in the list or something greater than zero if they are. Meaning if they aren't in the scoreboard player ID list, we can run to the next step. And if they are already in the scoreboard player ID list, then we're going to loop back and iterate to the next player. So we're then going to run an if statement to check if the current score for the player is greater than or equal to the high score. We're using the same get item iterator from all player ID list for our check. And then if they are the first player, you'll remember that the current high score is set to zero. So pretty much everybody is going to get yes on this if they're the first. We then set current high score to be their current score. So whatever their current score is, we use the same get item iterator from all player ID list. So if they do have the current score, then we set current high score to be whatever their score is. Is. So now we've updated current high score. So if they say had a score of three, we've set the current high score to be now three. And then for the next person, they have to be higher than this. We then set the current player ID to be that person from the all player ID list. Now, when this is done running through the entire list, we add the current player ID to the scoreboard player ID list. And this is important to note because the current player ID is the person who had the highest score. So now that we've added them to the scoreboard player ID list, we send display to self. And this is why I was saying it's like a loop because it's gonna continue sending display to self until all the player IDs have entered the scoreboard player IDs. And you'll note that once the scoreboard player IDs equals the length of the all player ID list, then we do not send display to self. And then we run this if statement, which checks to see if the length of scoreboard player IDs equals the all player ID list. And if it does, we set iterator to zero, and then we set the scoreboard string to be cleared out by using the underline scores, and then we remove the underline with the slash u. And then we run a while loop. And it's important to note that we're running this while loop in reverse of how we normally run a while loop, because this list, we want to be in order from top to bottom. If we ran this using set iterator to be the length of the list and then subtracted one, it would be the reverse. So it would be smallest to highest, which could have a good use. But in this case, we need to start by setting the iterator to zero. And then we check to make sure the iterator is less than the length of the player ID list. And during our loop, you'll see that we set the iterator to be iterator plus one. So when the iterator is equal to the length of the player ID list, meaning it's four and four, we stop running. And so that's why we're adding iterator at the end, not at the beginning where we had previously seen subtract because it's kind of the reverse of what we normally do. 
So now we set scoreboard string to be the scoreboard string. So we grab that same value that it's currently set, which was start at scores underlined. And then we break. And then we get the name of the current iterator from the scoreboard player ID list. And then we do another set line, which does the exact same thing, adding to the scoreboard string. We use a slash with a score. And then we get the persistent variable current score for that player ID from the scoreboard player list and add it as a string. And then when that while loop is done running, we display scoreboard string on self and we show self. There's a lot more math to this scoreboard that's in an ordered list than a regular scoreboard. And I encourage you to come check this out in person in build mode. If you'd like access, just simply drop your name in the comments and I'll make sure to add you as a friend and then add you as a collaborator to this world so you can import it into your own worlds. And you can blatantly just use these scripts. I'm happy for you to use them and make amazing worlds. That's awesome. But if you want to take a look at the script and kind of break it apart while you're working on your own script, I definitely recommend that. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to know when we have a new video, hit the bell and we'll see you in Horizon. Bye!